Hello, I'm Hyoan Gang from Hammam Church in Chuncheon. I had a dad who came home drunk late at night, a scary mom, an older sister with a temper, and an immature younger sister. My family was far from being what I considered to be an ideal family. Living with them wounded me emotionally and oppressed me. But after meeting the risen Jesus, our whole family was transformed and all of our emotional pain was healed. I would like to share with you the grace of God which united my family with the gospel. I was the younger twin out of three sisters and lived under very strict parents. Our family looked like a typical family on the outside. But if you looked closer, you could tell that we were far from being a typical family. My father really liked being with his friends and drinking. He even drank 40 bottles of Korean vodka in one night and wrote guarantees to his friends. Because of that, our family started accumulating debt and we started struggling financially. Unfortunately, my father did not change. He would leave early in the morning and come back late at night after drinking. Growing up, it was hard to see my dad. Because of my dad, my parents constantly fought. It mainly started from my mom yelling at my dad. She would even curse at him in the middle of a phone conversation and throw her phone. Her temper also affected my sister and me. Growing up, we were scolded much more than we were praised. She constantly compared us to other girls by saying things like, My girls can't do anything. I know other girls who are smart and independent, but I just don't know who you girls take after. These comparisons were always mixed with anger. We were always compared to smart, nice, and polite girls. I would get compliments outside of the home, but I was always scolded when I came home. This hurt my pride a lot. I wanted to be complimented at least half as much as other kids were. In addition to that, if we did not meet our mom's expectations or got on her nerves, we were punished. When my older sister and I fought, or when we received our report cards, our thighs would become red and bruised from my mom's spankings. My mother broke countless bats from that. She would only stop when we would desperately beg her to stop. Because we grew up under such difficult parents, my older sister and I became more and more irritable. My older twin sister, who was struggling with social relationships during puberty, started becoming meaner, outwardly expressing her change in personality. One day, a boy in our neighborhood stopped by to play at our house. He said he was hungry, so my sister cooked ramen for him. But he said that he didn't want ramen and wouldn't eat it. My sister got angry and yelled at him. Then she flipped over the table. He was shocked and ran home crying. <laughs> Even after that, my sister's anger didn't subside, so she sat on the couch with her arms crossed, heaving. My younger sister and I had to clean up the bowls and traces of ramen on the floor. I became angry with my twin sister because she didn't seem guilty or sorry about it at all. I thought, why do I have to clean up this mess I didn't even make? The more I thought about it, the angrier I got. One time, my twin sister and I fought, and she started bringing up my past mistakes. I told her to stop bringing up things from the past, but she wouldn't listen. On top of that, my younger sister was sitting beside us and defending my twin sister, saying things like, That's right, you said you wouldn't do that anymore, but you're still doing that. <laughs> I reached the limits of my patience and I exploded. I said all kinds of curses as I cried and screamed. Then I ran out of the house. After I left, my thoughts became more and more complicated. I started having doubts about everything. I thought, what good is it for me to stay here? Mom is always angry and my older sister treats me like a slave. I wandered around thinking that I was a completely useless human being. I was so angry. I wanted to have revenge on my family for making me feel this way. So I went back home and ignored all of my family members. The next day, I left early in the morning for school by myself. There was nothing I liked about my family. I thought that a family was supposed to accept me the way I was, understand me, and care for me with love, but mine wasn't like that at all. All of my faith in my family was broken. I did not accept my dad's authority and I let my mom's words go into one ear and out the other. My anger toward my twin sister was the worst. I would say to her whatever was on my mind, slam the door in anger, and even throw whatever was in my hands at the time. I always complained about having a family who cared nothing for one another. 
had no conversation whatsoever, and had absolutely no trust toward one another. From then on, I started blaming my family for everything. My mom would say, why don't my daughters have any confidence? Then I would say in my head, it's your fault I turned out this way, as I became filled with fury and frustration. I had low self-esteem, I was very timid, and I had trouble opening up to others. I thought it was all my mom and twin sister's fault that I was this kind of a person. I felt miserable because I wasn't accepted or loved by my family. I really felt like I was good for nothing, that I was an incompetent person who couldn't do anything. I thought that I didn't deserve to be loved. As these thoughts became louder in my head, I lost all of my confidence and love for myself. From then on, I closed myself off from my family and I did not talk to them. I did not share anything with anyone. That was because I felt like no one would understand what I was going through and why I was having such a hard time. I became more and more depressed and became a prisoner to my own thoughts. I really wanted to be loved. I did not want to be ignored and I wanted to be noticed as much as I tried. So at school, I was a completely different person. I wore a mask that showed myself off as a bright, smiling, hardworking student. And just like that, I hid my depression and low self-esteem. Then my friends and teachers accepted me and were really nice to me. Naturally, the times that I spent at school increased while times that I spent at home decreased. But then my parents started changing when I was in the eighth grade. My mother attended Hammam Church one day, and there she believed in the risen Jesus as her Lord. Then she started being patient and not being irritable. She also started praying for my father, whom she had resented so much. God heard her prayers, and my father also accepted Christ. My father went through a miraculous transformation. He quit drinking at once and started coming home early. On the days that he rested, he would ask us in the morning, Girls, do you want to go out anywhere? What about over there? I couldn't get used to it. I thought to myself, I don't know when he'll change back again, and was really cautious. Contrary to my doubts, my parents started respecting us and loved and cared for us despite the fact that we caused trouble. As my parents opened their hearts to us first like this, my heart started opening up to them as well. I started attending Hammam Church when I was in the 8th grade and saw a lot of church members giving testimonies at the pulpit. Students also testified. During the middle and high school retreat, kids my age went up to the pulpit to testify to their transformed lives. In the beginning, I would listen without thinking about it too much. But one day, I started desperately wanting to transform like them and really live. And when I was in the 12th grade, I attended their retreat with an earnest heart. Even though it was the same gospel about Jesus who rose from the dead, I started hearing it differently. The gospel said that God, heaven, and hell, which are not visible, all really existed. The solid evidence that proved this was the resurrection. This word, resurrection, was heard clearly through my ears. No one can die and live again, but Jesus was the only one who died and rose again in three days according to the Bible. This was also precisely recorded in history. Jesus really did rise from the dead. The risen Jesus is God who created me, and he's my Lord. As his resurrection became clear to me, everything started becoming clear. All the scripture that I had heard connected, and I stood before the living God, and I saw what I had done before God. God had sent his only son for me to save me, and Jesus had achieved everything recorded in the Bible and proved to us that he is God. But I had not believed in Jesus, the Son of God, even in his presence. That was when I finally realized why not believing in Jesus was the sin that would cause you to go to hell. God had even given up his Son for us after we had left him. And not believing in Jesus despite this fact 
was an unforgivable sin in the perspective of God. I couldn't help but admit how wicked a sinner I was. It was a shock. I had to become humble and repent right away. Almighty God, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me for not believing in Jesus. I will not be the Lord of my own life. Jesus, please come into my heart as my Lord. Only Jesus is my Lord and my God. I prayed earnestly like this and accepted Jesus as my Lord in my heart. Now that I had assurance that Jesus was God through the resurrection, God's great love filled my heart. At first, I didn't understand. Who was I that he came into this world for me? I did not understand. So when I would pray, I would ask, God, why didn't you just let me die? Why did you let me live? Then, I remember these verses. God created man in his image, and yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, from the book of John. Through these two verses, I found the answer. I felt like God was saying this to me. Hyoan, you are precious enough for me to have given my life for you. I love you enough to have sent my one and only son to you. At that, I broke down. Until then, I had never loved myself nor been satisfied with myself. But the Almighty God's confession of love for me was overwhelming. The reality of the greatness of God's love came over me, and I thought I would stop breathing. When my heart was filled with God's love, all the sense of inferiority and hurt that I had accumulated went away, and the wall that I had built between my family and myself crumbled. I finally realized why I'd had such a hard time. It wasn't that situation or my family had caused the tough times. It was because I had not believed in Jesus and was the Lord of my own life. That was why I had a tough life. Now that I believed in Jesus, all the things that gave me a hard time did not matter. Because I was deeply touched by the fact that Jesus was my Lord, that itself was enough. In the past, I felt like I was the only one having a tough time. I hated my twin sister for giving me a hard time, so I never thought about her feelings. But I began to think of the tough times that she must have had, and my heart broke for her. I prayed desperately for God to save her. Thankfully, he answered that prayer. As my sister and I talked throughout the night, she came to accept the risen Jesus as her Lord. My sister, who was like a ticking time bomb, became gentle as a lamb overnight, and peace finally came to our family. A few years later, my younger sister came to accept Christ as her Lord, too. God allowed everyone in our family to become children of light. Amen. After the retreat, I had an honest conversation with my mom for the first time. I told her that, in the past, I had disliked my family for fighting daily, and I had resented the fact that I was born into this family. But now, I was thankful that they didn't give up on us and allowed us to hear the gospel. When my mom heard this, she told me that she had never realized how hard things had been for me. She sincerely apologized and hugged me tightly. I started crying in her arms. My dad, who saw this, also came over and told me, I love you, as he hugged me. It was the first time that we openly talked about our feelings. And just like that, God healed our relationship. The atmosphere of our home started changing after everyone returned to Christ. Instead of the sound of TV, our home was filled with the sound of laughter and conversation. We became a family filled with love. One time, on our way to a relative's home during the holidays, 
we started singing hymns. As joy came upon us, we became filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a worship conference of our own. We imitated worship leaders and did worship dances that the kindergartners did in Sunday school. We were so joyful and happy. As we drove through the winding road for two hours, we didn't notice the time passing at all. In the past, I never celebrated my parents' birthday. Only after I accepted Jesus as my Lord did I start doing things for their birthdays. One time, I wanted to throw a party for my parents with our church community. On Sunday during lunchtime, I let our church members know and we sang happy birthday for them and had a party. I was so happy. I saw how happy my parents were and I was deeply touched. Now each of us serves the church in some way. My dad serves in the church kitchen. My mom and I teach Sunday school. And my younger sister takes notes for the middle and high school sermons and posts them on our church website. In the past, I would judge and condemn my family because all I saw were their flaws. But as I see them working hard to build up the church, my thumb rises for them on its own. Currently, I evangelize to share the risen Jesus on my college campus. During my four years of college, God sent a lot of souls to me. One day, a friend who was having a hard time because of misunderstandings with her friends came to me. She said that it was so hard and she didn't know what to do. So I shared with her about the risen Jesus, who is the answer to every problem. For one year, I met with her to share the gospel with her. As she accepted Jesus as her Lord, we became partners for Christ. Another time, I got to mentor a middle schooler. She grew up with a single parent, so she was very lonely. She had a hard time communicating with her mother, although she lived with her. As I heard this, I imagined how hard life must have been for her. I could not help but share the gospel with her. Jesus really did rise from the dead. The risen Jesus is God, and he is your Lord. Your life was filled with hardships because you didn't believe in Jesus as your Lord. When she heard the gospel, she accepted Jesus as her Lord. As I watched her confess that Jesus was her Lord, I thought about just how precious she was. God also gave me the chance to raise his disciples to live for his calling. I currently serve souls in a college dormitory that our church runs. As I serve them, God has allowed me to look after the souls around me and become one in heart with them. In the past, my family could not understand one another because we were trapped within our own problems and only hurt one another. But as all of us met the risen Jesus, we became a family filled with love and the most peaceful family on this earth. Amen. Through my mother, God opened the door for our family to receive the gospel, and our family became united through the gospel. I lift up all glory and praise to God. The gospel is enough. Thank you.